We are using Apex Data Parser to parse Excel files, but it's not fast enough for large files. What are our options? If you've not seen Apex Data Parser, pretty sure it's written by Carsten and, um, and Carsten's team in the Apex group. It's a, a magnificent piece of code because literally you can throw just about anything at it, JSON, Excel files, XLS files, CSV files, etc., And it will just go through and sort of sort out the mess and, and turn it into a relational structure for you so very very cool and avoids a lot of the hassles i mean i've seen i've lost count of the number of times i've seen people writing these things in utl file etc this is a wonderful one-stop shop um, to parse just about anything obviously with the flexibility comes a bit of a price which is it's basically going to be have some performance challenges because it has to be all things to all people let's have a look at how we can improve it so i'm going to create a table called t which has got a blob and i'm going to insert into that a large Excel spreadsheet. Now we can look at the size of that. It's what is it, about five megabytes in size. Now that might not seem big, but if you're unfamiliar, XLSX files, and the same with Word like DOCX files and PPTX files for PowerPoint, the X basically stands for compressed. They use an open XML format internally, but then before they save it, they actually zip it. You can actually open a XLS file with things like WinZip or 7Z, those kind of unzipping tools. It's a compressed file. So even though it's five meg, that's five meg compressed. Typically it's gonna balloon out to much, much more than that, especially if you have a lot of repeated data in there. I'm gonna set this running, I said note set this running. This is how easy Apex Data Parser is. You can see there, it simply says, I wanna parse the blob. I give it a file name, so the Apex Data Parser knows that I'm dealing with an XLSX file. And all it does, it's hunting, it's unzipping that file, probing all the cells in the XML and turning it into relational data. And it returns it as a effectively a pipeline structure. So you can just put a table around it and out you get back a nested table. Super, super cool. Now, as you can see, this is the slight you know, performance overhead. It chunked away for about 32 seconds. Now, one thing I should mention here is there is a separate optimization for Apex Data Parser, no matter what you're dealing with, which is, if a blob you're dealing with is larger than 50 megabytes, often people see things that run quite like extra slow, so to speak. The reason for that is we don't know how big a blob you're going to pass in. Ideally, when you're dealing with a blob, what you want to do is cache that blob in memory and then work with just the memory. But we can't do that automatically every single time because you might load a five gigabyte blob or a hundred gigabyte blob or an exabyte, you know, some huge blob. We can't just go, let's just jam that into RAM. We could destroy the server. So Apex Data Parser by default says if it's less than 50 meg, I'll cache it. If it's more than 50 meg, I won't cache it. If you know that you've got more than 50 meg of plenty of RAM and that's not an issue for you, here's a workaround. What you do is you take your blob convert it to being a cached one, and then use the cache one in your actual query. So you manually say, I'm going to force it into cache into memory and then deal with the cache. So if your blobs are larger than 50 megabytes, that's a good workaround to make things faster. This one was only five megabytes, so it was cached anyway, but it still took 32 seconds to extract those 50,000 rows. And the question is, can we do better? One thing I would look at doing is as I said, Apex Data Parser has to be all things to all people. It has to accommodate all sorts of different sort of file formats, etc. And ultimately, it's a pure SQL program, which is interpretive. There are other facilities that might do a better job. And here's an example. Here's a little batch file I've written, which uses Python. There's a nice little Python library called Excel to CSV. So this will simply run Python to take my XLS file and pump it out as CSV. Now, CSV still doesn't turn it into a relational table. But if I have CSV, then I can obviously take use of an external table. Here's what my little Python program is. It simply pulls in some libraries and simply says, read my file name in, load the workbook, and simply write all the contents out to a CSV file. Once that's done, here I can do an external table to simply pull in the CSV. So here's my Excel file. Here's all the columns in there because this Excel file is just multiple copies of DBA objects. And here's the sort of the magic of external tables. It simply says, I'm gonna use a pre-processor. So in comes my file, but the first thing I'll do is I'll take that file and I'll pass it into this program, which is a batch file on Windows, which ultimately calls Python, which calls that Python library, which takes my Excel spreadsheet, converts it to CSV, which means the rest of it is just 
basically using CSV, you know, comma separated file, etc. List out what the date formats will be, and off we go. So let's give that a run. Remember the Apex data parser took about 32 seconds for the five megabyte file. So now we're using database calling Python, converting to CSV using external tables to read the CSV to convert it to a relational table. We'll see how we go. So 18 seconds, almost twice as fast. And the moment you can get your head around the fact that we can now use external tables to drag in other tools that might be better suited to the job, well, we just keep Googling around, I suppose. So here's the exact same metaphor, but I went hunting around and I found a slightly better Python library. This one's called xlsx to csvpy Other than that, it's the same. It's just a different Python library. So I create a second, a second external table, and all it's doing is calling this new version, um, csv number two of batch file, which calls the different Python library. Create the table. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. I'm passing in my Excel spreadsheet, and off we go. Anyone that's familiar with external tables will know that you don't actually have to create an external table anymore. You can actually write that entire piece of DDL just in a select statement out of it. So you don't even have to create an object anymore, an external table object. And this one's down to 10 seconds. So I've got myself a 300% performance improvement, or as we often say at Oracle, a 3x, a 3x performance improvement just by switching out to perhaps a different tool. Other than that, it's no different in the sense that it's still a relational object. So I can still put where clauses on it. As you saw, it's account start. I don't have to just get the data back. I can do all the normal power of the SQL engine, but I'm still parsing an XLX file very, very efficiently into a relational structure. That's pretty cool.